Alright guys, welcome to your 23rd tutorial, and in this tutorial, you guys are going to be excited because this is probably the one you've been waiting for. I'm finally going to show you guys what happens when a car crashes into a truck. So, what we need to do is, a cop called me last night, true story, not really, but who cares. cop called me last night and he's like, Bucky, you're probably the greatest physicist I know, and I have a problem. Someone was driving drunk last night and they crashed into a truck, however, we need to figure out how fast they were going because we need to give them a ticket. I can't figure that out because I'm not as smart as you, so that's why I called you. And I was like, you know what, okay, just let me make a YouTube video about this because it's going to be awesome. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I always write down my formula, momentum equals mass time velocity. By the way, the symbol for uh, momentum is P in physics, if I didn't mention that earlier. So what I like to do now is I like to draw a diagram first what happened before the crash and what happened yeah if you guys couldn't guess it after the crash so this is the information they gave us before their crash there was a car now this car had a drunk driver in it his name was Al but that's not important and he also says that this car was traveling at some velocity that we need to figure out so for now I'm just gonna write question mark miles per hour because that's what we need to figure out for him however he did tell us that the car had a mass of 3000 kilograms which is useful information so I said thank you for that now he also told us that it crashed into a truck now this truck just happened to be filled with uh, roast beef so I'll just write beef truck on here and I'll color the wheels white because I'm bored there we go now this truck he said was parked so that means it has a velocity of zero miles per hour and this also had a mass well not also it had a mass of six thousand kilograms so I said okay thank you for that crucial information however I also need to know what happened after the collision so after the collision he says it was pretty ugly this car was going really fast and it got really banged up at the end so it kinda looks something like uh, you know a elephant that has like I don't know like a anorexic elephant or something and it crashed into this truck banged it up as well however it still had its nice white wheels let me just finish drawing this and might as well finish my diagram I mean I drew it this far so beef truck and a car so he says these two vehicles were crashed into each other so hard that they actually welded together into one big solid object now after the crash lucky someone was there to calculate the speed and they figured out that this big hunk of metal was traveling 10 miles per hour and I said okay well you don't even need to tell me how much the mass is because we know that before the collision the beef truck had a mass of 6,000 kilograms and the car had a mass of 3,000 kilograms therefore the total mass of this mig, uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, big hunk of metal is 9,000 kilograms so now he's like you know what can you find how fast the car was going with just this information and I said you know what lucky for you I just happen to be teaching the law of conservation of momentum so let me show you guys how to do that the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the total momentum after the crash so of course momentum equals mass times velocity so if we take the mass of this which is 9000 and we multiply it by 10 miles per hour we get total momentum equal to 90,000 and the units you write is just kilograms times miles per hour so after the collision this object had a total momentum of 90,000 kilograms times miles per hour why is that important well because once we have the total momentum after the collision we had the total momentum before the collision so we know before the collision this entire system right here must have had a momentum of 90,000 kilograms times miles per hour we also know that this beef truck had zero momentum why do we know that because it has zero velocity and whenever something has zero velocity it automatically has zero momentum 
So that means, through reasoning, that this car must have had all the momentum in the system. This car had a momentum of 90,000 before it hit this truck. So now we can use this information to solve the rest of this problem. So car before, we know that it had a momentum of 90,000 kilograms times miles per hour for reasons that I just explained. Now, in order to figure out the initial velocity, what we need to do is we need to use that formula of P, or momentum, equals mass times velocity. Now, in order to get velocity alone, what we do is we, and you guys should already know this, I probably shouldn't even have to explain this, but we do, ugh, okay, calm down, Bucky. We divide both sides by the mass. So, in this case, the total momentum of the car is 90,000 kilograms times miles per hour. And if you guys forgot the total mass of the car alone, not the entire system, but the only the car was 3,000 kilograms. So in order to calculate velocity, which is basically momentum over mass, what we do is we can first cancel out these units, kilograms, kilograms, that's the easy part, and then we take a 90,000 and put it over 3,000, and we end up with a velocity equal to, can you guys guess, 30 miles per hour. And you guys can actually see that because that's the only unit we have left. So there you go, that is how you figure out, in this example, like if you have a cop or this is pretty much what a lot of you guys are going to be doing whenever you work with law enforcement and your physicists basically they're going to have some information and they want you to put the rest of the puzzle together so guys little tidbit of information if you're ever driving a car car that's 3,000 kilograms and you crash into a beef truck that is 6,000 kilograms and you end up going 10 miles per hour due to the result of the crash then that must mean that you were going 30 miles per hour to begin with so again that guy wasn't driving that drunk but we might lie to the cops because we don't like drunk drivers and say that he was going 80 hey they're they'll believe us but anyways thank you guys for watching and uh hopefully you like that example and uh, plenty more to come so i'm gonna go grab a roast beef sandwich and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next video